What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in this week. So, while I'm not a big sports fan, there is a show on Netflix that I've been getting into quite a bit, and it's called F1 Drive to Survive. And uh, so, while I'm not a big sports, like general sports fan, I do really enjoy motorsports. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with the show, it revolves around the F1 series. Uh, Formula One race cars and in the show there's a ton of drive-bys of the F1 cars and listening to it you know it kind of got me thinking about the Doppler shift as something moves forward in front of you so this week we're actually going to be diving in and taking a look at how to use math and science and all that other fun stuff that you thought you'd never use in high school and we're going to apply it to sound design and we're going to take a constant sound and turn it into a Doppler shift. Also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. Uh, it's free to do and it helps me out a ton. So with that being said, let's jump into it. So the first thing that we're going to need to get started is the sound of an F1 car. And I scoured YouTube trying to find a bunch of videos and most of them are the drive-bys. Um, which doesn't really help us out at all. I need something on board that has a constant sound. So we're actually going to jump over to the game Beam and G Drive, and uh, we're just going to grab the sounds out of there. Alright, so now that we've got the sounds for our car, uh, it's time to, that we did a little bit of math. And so for this sound, uh, we're going to assume that we're using a camera with a 90 degree field of view and that we're 10 feet away from the path of the vehicle. Now obviously, depending on what you're working on, these are going to change, but for the simplicity of math's sake, uh, this is what I went with. So if we have a vehicle that's traveling, you know, let's say 180 mile per hour, it's going to be in that 20 foot field of view for 0 0.075 seconds. So these calculations are going to come into play here in just a little bit once we start messing with our pitch shift and our fade ins and fade outs and things like that. Um, so that's why a lot of this math is important. So let's go ahead and jump over to Pro Tools and we'll start manipulating our sound. So now that we've got our sound into Pro Tools, uh, we need to think about what actually happens during a Doppler shift. As something goes by you, it doesn't just pan from one side to the other. There's a couple other things that happen. One of the first things that you'll notice is as something approaches you and then goes away from you, it's going to get louder and then quieter. But also because of how sound travels through the air, if you notice when something's in front of you versus if it's coming at you, the pitch is actually a little higher and then the pitch drops lower than what it normally is as it moves away. So we have to take a look at our pan, we have to take a look at our volume, and we have to take a look at our pitch. All three of these things are going to come into play here as we're doing the Doppler shift. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find a part in this sound where we want to be our midpoint. This will be the point where the vehicle is perceived to be directly in front of us. So after listening to the sound, uh, it sounds like right here is, is going to be a good spot for our midway point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and drop a marker and we'll just call this midway. Alright, so now that we have our midway point, we need to go back to that math that we were talking about. And at 180 miles an hour, 10 feet away from where the vehicle is going to be, that vehicle is going to be in our field of view for 0 0.075 seconds. So we need to go on each side of the midway point 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take that 0 0.0 or 0 0.075 and we're going to divide it in half. So what we end up with is actually 0 0.0375. And the reason that that's important is we're going to come up here to our nudge. And we're going to do 0, 0, 3. Okay, so we can only go that far. 0 0.037 is going to be fine. So then we're going to take that and we're going to nudge back. We're going to drop a marker and we're going to call this start. And then we're going to go in front of it and drop another marker and we'll call this one end. And this is going to give us our, our markers for when we're making all of our different pitch shifts and our volume and things like that. So let's go ahead and start with our volume fades. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in and bring that in. Go ahead and zoom in here. And then of over here to our fade out. We'll bring that in as well. Um, now these fades aren't linear. Uh, they're actually logarithmic. So if we take our volume fade and we make it pretty sharp and we can adjust these as needed Okay, so you can hear just by doing the fade in and fade out, that doesn't really give us much of a Doppler shift, because like I said, we still have our pan and our pitch shift to think about. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our pan now. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drop down the automation bar here, and we're gonna select our pan. And with our pan automation open, uh, we need to figure out which way the vehicle is gonna go. Uh, so for this one, we're just gonna do from right to left. So I'm gonna go ahead and take everything here and we're just gonna move it all the way to the right. And we're gonna go ahead and zoom in here to our midway point so that we can kind of get a little bit closer. But at the start, everything's gonna be on the right side. So we're gonna go ahead and put an anchor point here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to this real quick just to make sure that all of our points are exactly where we need it. So now that we've got our anchor point uh, for the start, let's go ahead and go to our midway now. And obviously midway is going to be directly in front of us. So we're gonna go ahead and drop an anchor and pull that up to the center. And now we can go to our end point and we're gonna do the same thing here. And this time we're gonna move it all the way to So now that we've got our pan automated, we zoom out here and we go ahead and give this a listen. All right, so you can hear that it's really starting to take shape now and, and we can move these from 100% pan. Um, we can move those in a little bit, you know, because as the car is getting closer to us, you know, it is going to sound more full and more in front of us than just all of a sudden on the right and all the way to the left. Um, but this is going to be a good starting point. Uh, we'll play around with that here in just a second. The next thing that I want to do is I want to get our pitch shift in here. And so for our pitch shift, I'm going to go ahead and add a pitch shift in here. And I'm going to use the M Auto Pitch. And the M Auto Pitch is a great free plugin uh, for Melda Productions. I know I've talked about those several times in some of my past videos. 
There's a couple things that I want to keep constant here, and that's going to be our speed and our depth. And one thing that I like about this versus the pitch shift that comes stock in Pro Tools is with this, as it detunes, it detunes over the microtones, whereas the stock Pro Tools only does it in increments. It does have a fine tune knob, uh, but then that's multiple things that we have to automate. Whereas this, all I have to do is automate this detune knob and it'll give me the effect that I'm looking for. So to add a parameter to the automation timeline, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna click on our plugin automation. And we want our automatic tuning uh, detune parameter as part of our automation. We can go ahead and close out of this now. And if we add another automation point, now you can see that we've got our detune knob as part of our automation. So what I've done is I went ahead and I put our initial anchor point all the way at 100 cents. And now we can come in here to our start point. And we're gonna go ahead and drop another anchor point. And just like we did with the pan, uh, we're gonna go around to the other um, markers and we're just going to put our anchor points where they should be. Go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. See it better. So at our midway point, we wanna go ahead and take our next anchor point and we want to drop this down to where the pitch is normal. So that'll be zero cents. And then we're going to go to our end. Go ahead and drop another anchor point. And we're going to bring that all the way down. So now as we zoom out here, you can see that we've got our fade ins, our fade outs, our pans, and our pitch shift. So let's go ahead and take a listen. All right, so as I mentioned before, uh, you know, we can come in here and play around with uh, the panning a little bit. And I made this a little, a little bit more of a curve. That way, you know, the sound kind of doesn't just abruptly switch speakers. Uh, it still does because the car is moving, like I said, 180 mile an hour. So I kind of added a few more points in here to kind of give it more of a logarithmic um, kind of panning sound to it. And you can adjust this however you need to for your project to make it sound realistic. But I just want to give you guys a base idea of how to create this sound. So now that we've kind of adjusted our pan a little bit, let's go back in here and listen to it again and see how it sounds. And so you can hear that that sounds way more natural. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap things up on the Doppler shift. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out. If you'd like to stay up to date on some of the things that I'm working on, or you just want to be part of the community, you're more than welcome to join the Discord channel. Uh, there will be a link to that down in the description below. Until next time.